biomolecule that we are looking at today, proteins, it is made up of a sequence of amino acids linked. Meaning, we get amino acids, we link them together, and that polymer, that structure that we make, is what we simply call a protein. This biomolecule is very important to the human body because it has several physiological functions. Number one, there is a function that we used to talk about in the past. We always used to say proteins help in tissue regeneration and repair. You should remember that when the human tissue is injured, the process of tissue healing and repair occurs. In pathology, you've been taught that this process of tissue healing and repair happens with the help of the cell cycle. But for you to conduct tissue regeneration, you need what we call growth factors. And these growth factors are simply proteins. That's why we are saying we use proteins for tissue healing and repair or tissue regeneration and repair. The second one is that proteins help in immunity. Some proteins are very useful to protect us from toxins and infections. What are examples of those proteins? We normally call them immunoglobulins. But the other name is simply antibodies. These are soldiers that are in our body to help and fight infections. We are saying that they are simply proteins. Some proteins are very useful in locomotion, which is movement. For me to have moved from wherever I was to this place, there was what is called muscle contraction. The muscles contraction, contracted. In physiology, the lecturers have explained to you the formation of what is called the sarcomere with the help of actin and myosin. So actin and myosin are examples of proteins that we use in locomotion. Transport. Some proteins help in transporting important substances in the human body. And an example of such a protein is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that helps to transport oxygen in the blood. And you know that without oxygen in the blood, tissues are likely to suffer what we call cyanosis. Other proteins work as catalysts. What are catalysts? These are just agents that tend to speed up biochemical reactions. And examples of catalysts are enzymes. And enzymes, most of them are proteins. So having looked at the physiological functions, we need to ask ourselves one important question. What do we need to make a protein? What are the building blocks of proteins? It is amino acids. So we get amino acids as raw materials, as monomers for proteins. That's why the title for today is Proteins and Amino Acids. So what we shall do now is to try and understand what is this building block? What is this amino acid? So I'm going to use the second part of the board in order to demonstrate to you what this amino acid is. What are these amino acids? Before I go to the structures, before I even talk about the fact that they are the ones used to make a protein, you should remember that these amino acids, they have other functions in the human body. They don't only help to make proteins. They are not only the building blocks of proteins. They, are also, they, are, they also have other functions in the human body. For example, some of the amino acids and their derivatives, they are actually used in neurotransmission. Others are used in the synthesis of porphyrins, synthesis of pyrimidines, 
synthesis of purines, synthesis of urea. Let me explain a bit on the substances or compounds, molecules that are synthesized using amino acids. The derivatives of amino acids and some amino acids, they help in making porphyrins. This porphyrin is what is used to make the heme. Now the heme group is what makes up hemoglobin. So hemoglobin, when it is being synthesized, which we said in the functions transports oxygen in the blood, when hemoglobin is being made, four globin proteins are conjugated to the heme group in order to make hemoglobin. So this heme group, its source is a porphyrin ring. So porphyrins are normally made with the help of amino acids. What about epirimidine? When we come to nucleic acids, I'm going to talk about nitrogenous bases, which are used to make nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. And on the nitrogenous bases, I will explain to you to say there are two types of nitrogenous bases. We have those that are called pyrimidines, and the pyrimidines have got a single ring structure, while purines have got a double ring structure. And when we come to nucleic acids, I'll also explain further to say examples of pyrimidines are thiamine, uracil, and guanine and cytosine. Then examples of purines are adenine and guanine. I don't want to spend much time explaining on the nitrogenous bases because this, this will be covered in another topic. Urea. We all know that the human body is designed to get rid of ammonia. Because if ammonia accumulates in the human tissue, it's able to cause what is called ammonia intoxication. To prevent this from happening, the human body using the liver and its, its hepatic portal vein has got the ability to capture ammonia from the blood and the kidney helps to convert that ammonia to something that is less toxic, which is urea. And this urea, we normally excrete it or convert it to urine so that we get rid of the ammonia. Now we are saying that this urea, for it to be made, you need help from amino acids, some of them. And examples we can talk about of these amino acids is arginine, which is part of the amino acid used in the urea cycle. Another amino acid we can talk about is asparagine. Okay. So we have looked at the functions of proteins. We've looked at the building blocks of proteins. And we have defined this building block, which is an amino acid, and stated some of the functions. My next point is to try and show you the structure of this amino acid. How does it look? Later, how is it used to make a protein? So, we are going to look at the structure of an amino acid. What is an amino acid? Amino acids, we have about 300 amino acids in nature. Although we have 300 amino acids in nature, the human body utilizes only 20 amino acids in order to make what? Proteins. As a medical student, it's important for you to know the 20 amino acids. If you can't master their structures, at least understand their different groups and understand their names. So the 20 amino acids, although they seem to be a lot, 18 of them, 
their structure is similar except for two. 18 of the amino acids, they are basically made up of carbon that is bonded to carboxyl group, hydrogen atom, amino group, and what makes them different is what I can designate as R group, which is also called the side chain.